Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, March 26, 2015. Here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, Alex Jones sets the record straight on Jade Helm. The average person is being compartmentalized, and this is about brainwashing the military and the public to accept this. We're giving you the Death Star plans. You understand? We're giving you every bit of it. All the facts, their own documents, all of it. All of it right here in this damn report. The New World Order isn't coming, it's here. The Redcoats ain't coming, they're here. They're here. Well, it's official. The U.S. military is getting ready to operate undetected amongst the civilian population. It's Operation Jade Helm, a so-called military exercise. And it's set to take place this summer in nine states, including right here in hostile Texas. It will involve the Green Berets, the Navy SEALs, and the 82nd Airborne. The Houston Chronicle is reporting that these soldiers will attempt to blend in with the population in an effort to test the effectiveness of their infiltration techniques. And residents will be asked to report suspicious activity during the exercise. This is very, very dangerous. This is how the Stasi got started, the secret police. And this is their game plan. They are going to set up undercover military cells in plain clothes to blend in with the civilian population. You're not going to recognize who they are because they're going to look like you. They're going to look like me. Might even have a beer with them. Now, this is directly involving unwitting members of the civilian population. 17 different cities here in Texas will see an army presence during the exercise. And don't forget that they said that Texas, Utah, and even portions of Southern California were hostile territories. And the U.S. Army has failed to acknowledge or failed to address why we're being called hostile but the exercise moves on, and it will take place this summer on the streets of America. Jade Helm troops to operate undetected amongst civilian population. And of course, the military people and the vets are not buying any of it. They're not stupid. You can read about how it's to get the hearts and minds and how to get the public used to working and, and the local police working with the military. I mean, everybody who's been in the military knows about the secret EOD program going on for 18 years. Their whole ordnance disposal, you know, quote, the army is going to show up to defuse a bomb. But then you get the internal agreements. It's for everything from warrant service to checkpoints with military personnel in nondescript blue jumpsuits, just like the Army Ranger called in and said they were wearing EPA blue jumpsuits. It's always blue or tan jumpsuits. And it might say EPA. It might say police. Uh, it might say park service. Training with the police, training with locals in plain clothes, quote, doing suspicious activities is to train the police to work with the military in covert operations and to condition the military to accept it and to condition the public to accept it. And then when we cover it and talk about it, they practice the PSYOP in real time, putting out this information. I can see the script from Army Times to military.com to Stars and Stripes to Bloomberg to Daily Beast to Vice to the Houston Chronicle and no exaggeration today. You go search Jade Helm. There are now hundreds of articles, and in almost all of them, yours truly is being demonized. Jones, who's warned of an imminent takeover for decades, keeps claiming it's going to happen. But of course, it never does. No, it never does. Checkpoints, TSA, open spying, uh, highway dividers being put up nationwide. Uh, open manuals that the number one enemy's veterans and gun owners and Christians. I mean, come on. This is the PSYOP. That's right. One big PSYOP. And I wanted to get Joe Biggs' take on all this. We got the Navy SEALs, the Green Berets, 82nd Airborne, all operating undercover within the civilian population. Why should we be concerned about that? Well, the, the biggest concern is the fact that, like we've said, it is a PSYOP. It is a... a a mission to help condition people to seeing the ground troops. But this, one of the scary things about it is, in Texas, a lot of people are gonna be armed. Regardless of the fact if, if we hadn't spoken about this, 
this might not be as big as it is. We probably helped save lives by doing this because just imagine being at home and hearing helicopters flying overhead and rounds being shot off, doors being kicked in. People are going to gra are going to grab their guns and do the the normal. And they're already warning people that that's what they could expect. Yeah. They're going to say they're going to hear loud noises. They're going to see suspicious activity. They're asking uh, civilians to report suspicious activity. And we're taking a lot of heat for this, just for reporting all, the, all this. You, in particular, they're really attacking you. The Stars and Stripes, mainstream media, the U.S. Army, just for reporting on this. I want to read to you a little bit what the Houston Chronicle said. They characterize our response to this drill as an example of ultra right-wing fears of a government takeover in the Lone Star State. They say that we are completely overreacting to all this. What do you say to that? Well, I don't think we're overreacting whatsoever. I think we are doing what we need to do to bring attention to this entire operation. Because like I said, if people aren't warned, they're going to have that natural reaction when they hear something like that. So I think we've actually done a service to the people to help bring attention to this and expose the fact that this will be going on. This will actually help uh, stop something from happening just so people can be aware of what's going on, don't you think? Well, exactly. And what about how they say that these exercises were meant for overseas operations? Uh, that, that's one thing that I think is the biggest load of, you know, crap in the whole thing, because we've seen time and time again, all these different urban warfare training centers yep. popping up, AP Hill, the one up in uh, North Carolina, the Marine Corps uses, churches, soccer fields, all this stuff. I mean, it's a load of BS. You train in an area that you're going to fight over in your theater of operation, and these places look more and more like urban America, and now they're moving off of a government installation that we spend, quite frankly, millions of dollars on taxpayer money to build these installations for the soldiers to train and fight or to train to go overseas for. Why do we now need to leave these government facilities that were spent and bought and paid for for that? Why do we have to bring that into our backyards? Why do we need to work with the civilian population and local law enforcement to get that training done? Because the times I was in, we just hire some people or you take another unit who's not training and you use, you use them as what's called op four. Those are the guys who play, play the bad guys. So you don't need to bring this kind of training into America's backyard. That's right. And we have leaked army documents, yeah. army training documents that make it perfectly clear that they plan at some point to have martial law right here in the continental United States. There's the leaked 2012 U.S. Army Military Police Training Manual, for example. It's entitled Civil Disturbance Operations. And in it, it describes how soldiers will be ordered to confiscate firearms and kill American dissidents. It says it right there in the Army Manual, folks. And it goes on to say that prisoners would be detained in temporary internment camps and re-educated to gain a new appreciation of U.S. policies. Wow. So what do you say, Biggs? Do you think you so and I need to be put in internment? We need to be re-educated on U.S. policies. So is, is that part of what the uh, the Hillary Clinton fun camps are for the adults or Maybe whatever? that's it. Maybe it's Maybe fun that's camps. how it's all rolling out. Jade Helm and then the Hillary Clinton fun camps at all. Well, it reminds me of George Orwell's 1984, all right? Uh, two plus two equals five. And let me tell you something, folks. 1984 wasn't written to be an instruction manual, but that's how these guys are taking it. They're taking it serious. Re-education uh, re camps, right? That sounds like something right out of the pages of an Orwellian nightmare. Do you think that they're really prepared to go through something like this? Well, they do re-education camps in a sense in the U.S. Army. When you fail to obey their orders, you decide to think outside the box and actually be a human being who makes his own decisions you will be removed from a training facility and then taken to a re-education type uh, tent where they kind of hammer down these basics about how you don't need to be thinking, uh, just listen to what you're told, react to what we say, and do that. So that's a lot of things that they use in training in the military already. So I don't see how it would be that difficult for them to, in turn, use that on the civilian population. Well, it doesn't sound like any kind of fun. And we're going to have more on Operation Jade Helm. Later in the broadcast, Alex Jones is filing a report. You're going to see that later at the end of the broadcast. But right now, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about, I almost called him Sergeant. Uh, he doesn't deserve that title. Yeah, Bo not... Bergdahl, the deserter, what's the latest on him? Well, yesterday we found out that he will be given the charge of desertion and misbehaving before the enemy. Now, Good. what these two charges mean, if he gets charged with it at a, a court-martial level, 
is that he could spend to the rest of his life in prison on these charges alone. Now, a lot of people on social media are going around calling for a death penalty, things like that. Now, that can only happen if we have declared war, which we didn't. This is more like a police action, like in Vietnam. So that can happen. But what can happen is if they find out without a shadow of a doubt that soldiers, the six soldiers that did die, that they say right now died looking for him, if they can prove without a shadow of a doubt that a soldier died on a mission actually looking for Bo Bergdahl, then he could possibly be given the death penalty at that point in time. But the big thing is the cover-up behind the Obama administration, the lies to get this man and essentially Well, that's what I want to hear him. about. I want to hear about the prisoner swap. What's up with the prisoners? Where are they right now? Are they a threat? Uh, what's the deal? All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a, a look at that video right now, which is going to dismantle the Obama administration's lies about essentially what happened with this entire Bo Bergdahl swap. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, we now know that Bo Bergdahl has been charged with desertion and misbehaving before the enemy. Now, if convicted at a court-martial, Bo could serve up to life in prison. Now, a lot of people are saying that Bo should get the death penalty for this desertion charge, but... For something like that to happen, we would have had to have been in a declared war with Afghanistan, which we are not. Now, there is a possibility that Bo could get the death penalty if he is deemed responsible for the loss of life in uh, one of the six soldiers who died uh, while supposedly looking for Bo Bergdahl for a long period of time. So until that is proven without, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, then that won't happen. But if something like that does get proven and there is proof that a soldier did lose his life while on a mission that was specifically looking for Bo Bergdahl, then he could possibly face a death penalty. He was looking for someone who spoke English so he could talk to the Taliban. And when we heard that, it told us, okay, he's actively seeking out the Taliban. Over the next couple months, uh, all the attacks definitely were far more directed. Following his disappearance, IED started going off directly under the trucks. They were getting perfect hits every time. Their ambushes were very calculated, very methodical, like they knew what we were gonna do. Now the big question though is, should President Obama be blamed for this? And the answer quite frankly is yes, he should be blamed for this. Why did they make the soldiers in Bergdahl's unit sign these non-disclosure agreements if he was a hero, if there was nothing to hide about this? This is another Obama deception. You and lots of other soldiers signed a non-disclosure agreement uh, with the military. I've really never heard of anything like this happening on such a widespread scale uh, for regular Joes uh, as opposed to special forces. Um, are you worried now that the military is going to try to punish you for talking? I mean, uh, it's certainly a possibility, um, but I don't think that I could have uh, continued to go on uh, without being able to share with you and, uh, you know, the people uh, the true things that happen in this uh, situation, because if you guys aren't made aware of it, um, it, it'll just go on. He'll be a hero and, and nobody's going to be able to know the truth. I mean, you mean to tell me that this entire time while they were making this trade with five top Taliban insurgents for Bo Bergdahl, that the president didn't have any ounce of a clue about Bo's past and his mishaps in his unit, the times that he's tried to leave, the things that he said. We heard from our interpreter that the American that was walking around in the Afghan village looking for somebody that spoke English and water also wanted to seek out the Taliban. Because I find that very hard to believe seeing that in June of 2012, Michael Hastings had come to that exact same conclusion that Bo was acting that way, that he was a very young, confused man in his Rolling Stone article, America's Last Prisoner of War. I think this is the most significant and undercovered story about the war in Afghanistan from an American perspective. It's a story about the only prisoner of war. Under normal circumstances, uh, he would be a cause celebre everywhere. But because of the nature of why he left and, why he got, and how he got captured, he, he's been sort of buried. The Pentagon has intentionally sort of buried his case for, for a variety of reasons. I just think it's a little shady that the president is going to act like he didn't know that and he made these decisions based off the fact that 